Good morning, Yarny friends. Welcome to Yarnysville. My name is Kim, also known as Yarny for a Smile, and today is Monday, August the 29th. morning I wanted to log on and show you something that I got in the mail and I actually got this in the mail on Friday but it's been that crazy and I have not had time to open this and do an unboxing. But before we get into that I just want to show you this lovely jewel. This is Color Riot pattern. This is the name, and the yarn I used is the Color Riot Pack, and it uses a mini steam pack, and it makes this glorious, kind of like asymmetrical half circle shawl with lots of garter. And I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of doing tons of garter, so I did get a little uh, bored with it halfway through, but it does go super fast and is very mindless. Yeah. But I love how the yarn was dyed. This is all these mini skeins are the color riot except for this black. This black is actually Sam Elliott and that is from Image Yarns. And I love that black and white speckled because you can really go crazy with them. Let's get into the unpacking. So as you can guess, this is something from Della Q and Jimmy Beans. There is a live video that I, I made on the channel. I talk about how Jimmy Beans has put on their saddle bag. It's the Jimmy Beans Delicate saddle bag for 40% off. And they're eliminating those from the collection because they're bringing in new bags for fall. One of the bags they're bringing in is going to have like a doctor's bag style opening that I'll insert a photo here. This bag will come out in this purple color in September, but in November it will come out in the other colors of the line. They also have a bag called Rut Sack, which I'll insert a photo here. And that bag will come out in the other colors of the line. But this, my friends, is something that I've been wanting. And I have a birthday around the corner, so I went ahead and treated myself for my birthday. I love their knitting bags. I use them daily along with some of my other knitting, uh, other bags that are not knitting bags. But theirs are my favorite just because they are that canvas and they're waterproof and they're lightweight and I like lightweight because I tend to be an overpacker. So the bag needs to be light to handle all the extra things that I throw in it. When you order their bags, they do come in a dust cloth. I do hang on to these because this is how I store my bags. So we have a storage room, and I'm a little bit of a bag hoarder. It's okay. It happens. Um, I love bags. As a homeschool mom, you know, we go to the parks or we're going to field trips, and sometimes, depending on what I need to carry, it involves a different bag. And there's always knitting going with me, so I do like to store all my bags in their dust cloth if they come with them. And what I do is I'll actually poke a hole in it and I'll put it on a hanger so it hangs like this. And I have those rolling racks, and that's how I have them hanging. But let's see, I'm gonna pull it up close. Let's see if I'm fine with it. This may be their friends, this may work out well. Oh, that's my size. Not gonna lie, it's not as big as I anticipated it. I mean, I saw all the sizes, so I should have kind of known what size it was gonna be. But this is the Maker's Tote Bag in dark blue gray, is what the color name is. And to me, it's just a, a like a navy blue with that wax canvas. Brown leather trim, 
and then it has the wax canvas on bottom. It does have metal feet, which I appreciate greatly. And it has leather or leather handles. I do appreciate the hardware that they use on their bag, that it's not silver shiny. I like that it matches the rusticness of the bag and that the buttons have the little lotus on there. This is not a huge pocket. This is like two separate pockets. There's no exterior bottle pocket, and we know how that hurts my heart because I am a water girl, and water goes with me everywhere as well. On the back, there's a zipper um, that has a little lining in it. You can see how far it goes down. My hand cannot go all the way down it, but it's pretty long. These pockets on the front are pretty spacious. My hand goes down much further, and my fingers are open up all the way wide. This is for the safety pin that holds your stitch markers. And if you've watched my previous reviews, my stitch markers are not going on there until I modify that pin because they do pop off, and I've lost markers. On my... Um, roll top, it tends to pop off more. On my Maker's backpack, it's on the side, so I don't, I don't bump it as much, but it has popped open several times. So I just don't keep my stitch markers on there. I put the pin on for decorative purposes, and then I make a little attachment to put right here to put my stitch markers on, and that way I don't have to worry about losing them. So the bag itself opens with snaps. And it's just a bucket bag with a carry strap. And these swivel, which is really nice when you're throwing it on. You don't have to fight with your strap to get it situated. I do like their padded strap covers. They are very comfortable. It takes a little bit to get them broken in, but once you do, they're very comfortable on your shoulders. The inside of their bags are they're almost the same as all the other ones. So you have your yarn lead where you put your yarn in your bag and you can lead it through this and it'll come out. And then this right here is your dental floss cutting tool. So you always have something to cut yarn on you. And then you have a zipper pocket right up under that and above your yarn cutting or your yarn feed. You have the two slip pockets on the side, which is what I essentially have to use for bottle pockets, but they are not flat on the bottom, and they do not go all the way down. So your typical metal water bottles don't really fit in them very well. You can use, like, the plastic water bottles, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to use those ever, but I always have to have water. So this bag is big enough that... I'm hoping my new metal water bottle that I'm getting today fits in and it's standing up and I still have room for everything else because I'm getting a 32 inch um, hydro flask so I'm really even trying to step up my water game even more than normal so those water bottle pockets are always very important to me you do have three um, pin loops also used for crochet hook loop holders and two slip pockets on this side. Each of their bags come with a card that tells you about the maker's bag. They all come with a little dot journal for notes. It tells you how to use your bag. And then they all come with the pin and the three lotus stitch markers. And they all come with a little delicate darning needle. And I'm going to be honest, these are not my favorite darning needles at all. They're very thick and they're short and they're straight. Um, my favorite are the Haya Haya that have like the slightly bent tip. They tend to be a little slimmer at the end, so you can really get those in those smaller stitches. And that little curve really helps 
maneuver throughout the stitches on the high highest. But these things, you know, I keep them in the bags for emergency purposes, but always carry a high high up. So I have a few more minutes before we have to go. So I'm going to show you how I do these. I always take off my stitch markers. I'm going to tilt my camera just a little bit so you can see. See some more of my plants. So once you get your stitch markers off, if you put your, if you have your pin with a pointy side going in first and you put it in, there is a chance that if you bump it, this will fall off. I don't advise that. Um, I've actually, my roll top, I learned that the hard way when I was carrying it, and but luckily I saw it on the ground and was able to pick it up. But it almost was a disaster. So what I do is I maneuver my bag so I put the head of the pin in first. It's kind of a pain, but... Then I roll it in. So now the head of the pin is on the back part or on the inside of the pocket. And my clasp is outside. And it's just more secure, it's falling off. Now what you can do is what I've done on my other bags is get a bigger lobster claw and use some of the jewelry making tools and attach it to this little circle part right here and let your stitch markers hang there, which I may do with this one, I haven't decided yet, and still utilize that for stitch markers. But, I don't know. Because that seems to be like the most secure way to put them on that I personally have noticed. But that is all for now. I'm going to pack this up and I'm going to use this while I'm out running errands today. And then I'll come back and show you how I packed it up this afternoon and give you a overview of what I saw. So I have a 17 ounce water bottle. You can see the side pocket. That's it all the way in, but it's not even touching the bottom. And it leans over because the pocket does not go all the way to the bottom. So there's a good couple inches under it. So the best thing I can do is just stand it up in the back, which kind of defeats if having the side pocket. Hello, Yarny friends, and welcome to part two of this video. Um, it's been a couple of days. Today is actually September the 3rd, which is a Saturday. So I've had this bag in use all week since Monday. And as you can see, there is definitely some of the wear in the wax canvas, which this is completely normal for wax canvas. So again, this is the Delic Tote in the dark blue gray color, which is just a blue canvas. So it does show little scratches, but that's what gives it its rusted look. I have not put the stitch markers on here again because I do not want to lose them. I've had it happen. I have used this bag all week and also if you notice it's no longer as sturdy like at first this part would really stand up on its own but this canvas starts to wear in which personally it's a love for me. I love bags that kind of get that relaxed feel that are not stiff as a board but I know that there are many out there who live for stiff and structured bags. I'm not really one of them. I love these grab handles so much. This is, when I first get out of the car, I always grab it like this. As I'm getting in the car, I take it off crossbody, which is how I typically wear it, put it in the other seat like this. The bottom has some of the canvas wear, but really right here where I get to my phone constantly is what shows the most. Does it bother me again? No. This pocket back here, I was initially using it for my wallet. So this is a Bungalow 360 wallet and it has been loved and used for many, many um, years now. But it has alpacas on it, super older print. I wish I can find another one. But I had it originally back here, but I do have to shove it in to get it in there and it's just not very accessible 
It will fit, but it takes some maneuvering. And this is my favorite style wallet. So we'll zip around. I'm, I'm not sure the length. So this pocket, I just kind of um, haven't really utilized that much because I use the zipper pocket, interior zipper pocket, to hold my key fob and my house keys. And then I actually keep my chap chapsticks in lotion in these internal slip pockets on the other side. Let me turn the back right. Oh, no, that's right. Right here. Because that's what I hold this stuff with. But I haven't really utilized that pocket that well. My phone, I just slip it in. But I do love this bag. However, as you know, in my videos and my reviews, I am going to be very honest. And I don't mean to be rude or any way about the products. Because I love Jimmy Bean's bags. You know, I have, this is now the third one of this line. Um, and I'm going to be getting the satchel when it comes out in this month in purple. And I have several of the older Namaste version when they owned it, which is the Maker's Backpack. I have it in Petal. And then I have the Mini Maker's Backpack in, I think it was called Mocha or Chocolate. It's the brown. And then I have like this fold over um, when they had Namaste. It's black and it, it's kind of like it's it's tall, but it folds over. And then I even have some of the original Namaste bags still. Well, I have all my original Namaste. I have the Harlow, a Monroe, and a couple of other, some other one. And then I have some of the, the needle holders, the BYOBs. So I love their bags. But. The roll top bag and this bag are basically the same bag. The only thing it's different is they change the handles because the roll top just has this one handle and a strap. that rolls over and snaps. But they both have these pockets. The tote has obviously bigger pockets and the tote has the leather trim at the bottom where the roll top does not. It's just completely canvas where the pin is changed. Like now it's a little bit higher on the tote bag, which I do appreciate more. I don't see that getting as bumped as much because it's higher up on your waist where this was kind of just in an odd place if you have stuff in this pocket. But the back of the bags. Both have that zipper. The tote does have a leather trim around theirs. But the inside are exactly the same. The tote also has a swivel over this just attached strap, which, you know, does get twisted and you have to fight with it. So I do appreciate and love that they added this feature. This is on all my other favorite bags that I use for knitting that are actually diaper bags by GGB. And I have a lot of um, photos on my Instagram. If you just want to click on my hashtag, I have my personal hashtag with them because I was affiliate with them for many years. And I'll post that in the show notes. But here's where my bag preferences get kind of in the way of my love for Jamie Beans. Being a affiliate of GGB for so long and their bags, I really love their bags. They have a lot of aspects that they bring to their bags that other bag companies have just not caught on to yet, and it's a shame. Number one, external pockets. You know, I do enjoy both of these bags, and they are almost, if not the exact same size as well. Definitely the same width. I mean, they're the same bag. If I was choosing one, I would definitely go with a tote and not the roll, top, the roll top. And I have a video on the roll top, so if you want to see my thoughts on that, you know, you can watch the video. 
This is a great bag. It's been my favorite go-to daily bag for a while since I had it before I got this one. I do love the gray. It doesn't show the wear of the canvas as much as the blue. That gray is very pretty. It's almost like a lavender gray. And I kind of wish I got this tote in it, but I'm glad I got the blue as well because I want to have different colors of their, their bags. I really wish they would step up and put external pockets on their bags. The Makers, Canvas Makers backpack does have an external pocket. I know the satchel that's coming out does not have external pockets. And I'm okay with it. But it would make it so much better for me. But that does have the cool doctor's bag opening that's coming out. The only other downfall I can think about the new satchel coming out is it's probably going to be the exact same interior as far as pocket layout. I do know that the satchel bag that's coming out, and I know this because I'm an affiliate with Jimmy Beans and I've talked to people at Jimmy Beans. It's going to be smaller slightly than the tote. The tote is going to be a bigger bag than the new satchel. Which are this, you know, this bag is the same size as the roll top. So the new satchel will be a little bit smaller. And that's probably to accommodate that doctor bag style opening that's going to be across the top. I do love their bags. I do love this swivel. I think that was a great improvement. I do want to point out, though, that their strap on the tote. So right here on this side, there is the leather detail. On this side, there's not. At first, that kind of bothered me because it's not balanced, but it is what it is. I do love this leather bottom trim, although I kind of think it's kind of crazy that they didn't just carry that over. But I guess, you know, as far as wear and tear, it's probably a good thing that they didn't. But I do love this leather trim. You can faintly see the Delic logo when I hold the bag. A certain way and I, I like that it makes it more um, I guess streamlined as you can see from my roll top let's let the light hit it my tag that says Della Q is actually coming off and I'm either gonna have to re-sew that or take it to a bad place and have them fix it but it is definitely coming apart there I am very rough on my bag, so that could be the reason why. But actually, I kind of like it because it kind of gives it more of that little rustic used bag because this bag has been used a lot. And so I don't mind that it's showing somewhere. Even its feet look a little rough these days. I wish this back pocket was just a tiny bit longer so it would accommodate most wallets. Because that's a great place to keep your wallet because that's going to be right up next to your skin on your side, on your body, and it's a little bit more secure than having it in the front. And I just like having my wallets kind of in the back part always. Actually, the roll top may just be a slightly big, bigger. Let's see. Yes. I love that they put the leather trim on it, but I don't know if you can notice. By doing that, they also, if I hold these up side by side, shortened that back pocket. This one on the roll top is nice and long. It almost goes all the way across. And now because of this little other detail that they added on the tote, it is a lot shorter. So where my favorite wallet easily goes in with room to spare of the roll top, it is no longer the case with the tote. Like, it's, I have to shove it in. It'll go in, but it's just not as easy to get in and out. And then that always happens. Because it's a much tighter fit. So I really wish that they had not shortened that pocket. Other than that, though, the bags are, they're the same. They're the same, except this one was made to roll 
But I made this comment when I first got this bag that, to me, the roll is pointless because I can't get stuff in there. And so all the time I just left it like this, essentially, I just treated it as a tote. And just note, I did not get sent this bag. This bag, every one of these bags that I own, I bought with my own money. They have not sent me anything to review. And even if they did, that's not going to sway my opinion. I believe in honest reviews about products because this is money that we work hard for. And we want to make educated decision on who we spend it with. I hope this video was useful to you in deciding about your bag. It will be a favorite bag. I'm curious to see how I like the satchel since it's going to be a little bit smaller, but I cannot wait to be able to pre-order that and get that so I can review it for you guys. So if you're interested in that, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Please give this video a thumbs up. Thumbs up really help content creators and we just greatly appreciate it. And follow along, hit the bell notification so when I do get that bag and get that video up, you will be able to see the review and make a choice if you want to get the bag for yourself. If you have any questions or comments, please, as always, leave them in a the comment below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful, crafty day.